Hi, this is Morgan Cottle. Uh, thank you for taking the time to look over my great solar system rescue flip chart that I created uh, from the original Tom Snyder uh, simulation from the 90s. Uh, these pages will show you uh, how I use it in my classroom and why I see it as such a valuable way to start the year to have my kids work in groups and come to consensus. These first couple of pages are used to show the students an introduction to the simulation and their roles that they will take on during the simulation. I still use the Tom Snyder booklets but have converted them over to PDF and as an interactive flip book. So it's an exciting way to get started. So I have converted the old laser disc over to uh, digital on the hard drive and included those video clips in the Active Inspire software. Uh, it's still a great way to show the kids the introduction to the simulation. After that's over, I have the uh, students look at pages three through seven in the booklets to orient themselves to all the facts that'll help them come to consensus and make decisions uh, throughout the simulation. After they've uh, oriented themselves to the roles, we go on to the first mission. Uh, during this time, I usually play the video clip three times. The first time, they don't take any notes whatsoever. The second time through, they take notes according to their role. And the third time, we go through and look at the notes and determine who has what clue. You can see here that on this page, I choose the uh, geologist to come up and represent the group and use the interactive whiteboard to give us the reasoning behind the planet that they choose. At this point, there's a lot of debate back and forth, and the goal being that uh, every group come to consensus on what planet we should travel to. I have two uh, purposes for this page. If you look at it, there, there's choices, of course, of which planet that we've come to consensus on, but this is also a place where I, I use the, the active voters within the software for each group to share with the class what planet we should travel to. So uh, we'll turn the voters on here pretty quick and show you that uh, each, each group then texts in their answers and we can pull up a group and hopefully come to consensus. Now once we come to consensus, this page is also used to then click on which planet to go to. So after all the voting is over, we can pull up the graph and we can see on this example that both Earth and Neptune were selected as possible planets. Well, we would continue to discuss what happened, why did we make those choices until we came to consensus on one planet. So if it was Earth, we could click here and it would take us to the video of Earth that would say, you know what, that, that's not it. But we can click back and have a debate again, have a discussion until we uh, found the correct planet, and in this case the correct one is Neptune. So when we click on there, it'll take us to the video clip that shows us, congratulations, you have selected the, the, the right planet to go to. Now that we're at the correct planet, we continue to have a consensus model within the groups and the class about the merits of each tool and which tool should be used. You can see from the notes here of this one class that we looked at all four possible tools, they did some voting, we hadn't come to consensus, back and forth through the merits of which tool to use. Once we have consensus, we go to this page which lists all the tools and we can click on each tool to get the um, results from that. After each result, we uh, take notes, we eliminate possible uh, scenarios until we can come back and reach consensus on which uh, lander to use. In this case, uh, it was the Astro, and that was the correct uh, choice for this particular simulation. We've gone down, and at this point I've included an Excel spreadsheet that we could click on and add um, the costs involved with this particular part of the simulation. This is a great introduction to fifth graders on how to use a spreadsheet. It not only keeps track of the cost for this particular mission, as you can see, we enter in there, but we it also tallies up totals for the entire part of the simulation. You can see as we click on the columns for each in individual mission, 
it changes it the totals for that mission but the entire overall simulation also for the game so as we go through and change how many tools were used, how many rescue plans were attempted, any unexpected costs. Uh, that particular mission has changed as well as the, the cost at the end of the trip. Uh, you can see now that we've moved on to uh, the different mission and with that comes taking on one of the four different jobs in the simulation. Uh, along with this they rotate through and whoever is the new geologist becomes the new group reporter. Uh, I want to thank you for letting me share how I use your simulation and how I've changed it over to an Active Inspire flip chart. Uh, it is a simulation I count on very much at the beginning of the year for its strong emphasis on group dynamics and consensus building. So once again, thank you very much for taking the time to look through my flip chart.